All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming today. This is a, a part of our fourth Thursday's Lunch and Learn webinar series offered by the Breast Health Collaborative of Texas. It's uh, organized by our our program committee, so I would like to thank them. It's headed by Dr. Julie Nanja from Baylor College of Medicine, um, Lizette Martinez and Laura Pena from uh, Harris County Hospital District as well, and Gina Lawson from BCCS. So that's what you're all listening to today. Today should be a walkthrough on um, eligibility services and access points for BCCS and MBCC uh, treatment programs. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to the speakers, uh, Gina Lawson, who is again on our program committee. So thank you, Gina. Um, she is the Outreach and Education Coordinator for BCCS, which is part of the Texas Department of State Health Services. And Stacy Johnson is a Policy Analysis, Acute Care Policy Development, Medicaid CHIP, which is part of the Texas Health and Human Services Commission. So I will hand it over to you, too. Great. Thank you, Carrie. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Okay. Okay. Can you computer too? We're doing all right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate the opportunity to provide an overview of both the breast and cervical cancer services program and the special Medicaid for breast and cervical cancer treatment program as well. Um, and, um, Carrie already introduced my, myself for me. I'm Gina Lawson. I'm an outreach coordinator for breast and cervical cancer services. And I've been here for the last four years. I'm almost hitting my four-year anniversary. And um, so I'm going to cover the BCCS side. And we will term BCCS for short for the breast and cervical cancer services. And then we'll say MBCC for the Medicaid for breast and cervical cancer treatment program as well. So you'll hear that a lot throughout. Um, I'll also um, let you know that, that you, you know that Stacy Johnson is going to cover the MBTC side. I'll go ahead and let her introduce herself now, and um, but I'll start the presentation with BTCC, BTCS information, and then we'll turn it over to Stacy for MBTC information. And so we'll save our questions for the end of the presentation. But I'll let Stacy go ahead and introduce herself a little bit. Hi, I'm Stacey Johnson. Um, I'm a policy analyst at the Health and Human Services Commission, and I work on this program, um, Medicaid for Breast and Cervical Cancer uh, Treatment. And um, I want to apologize in advance. I have some respiratory issues today, and I hope I can make it through. <laughs> I tell them we're, we're on the same boat. Here in Austin, we're in Austin, so um, of course you all know about that, the allergies out here. Um, Carrie, I'm flipping the page and I apologize. Um, can you help me? Which button? It says stop sharing. Oh, yes, yeah, so there should be little arrows at the bottom of it. There we go. There we go. All right, you go. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I'll go over the objectives real quick. Um, following this presentation, attendees will be able to discuss our eligibility requirements and keep both the BPCS and the NBCC program, as well as describe some of the services that we provide through BPCS, and also, oops, I went to that. And uh, the last uh, key message is going to be where can you find more information. All the information that we're providing to you, most of it is going to be on our BPCS texas.com website as well as how to find our online clinic locator so you can help patients and um, your clients find the access points for both BCCS and MBCC. So these first, so these first three slides I'm just going to go through real briefly. Um, we are part of Texas is part of the National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. And um, it is over 20 years old now, and some of our BCCS clinics here in Texas have been with BCCS since 1991, since the beginning. So um, there's people out there that know, know a lot more than I do. <laughs> so the, and this was the first national screening program in the United States, and of course this is specifically for women who are uninsured or underinsured and at a low income, and so we'll go into a little bit more detail on that. Um, these next these slides, and these are going to be these are posted where you are available to download our slides to refer for more information after the program. So I'm just going to briefly show you these. These are the 
for the moms that help um, help guide our program. And um, we are part of the Texas Department of State Health Services, which is under the umbrella of the Health and Human Services Commission. And one of the key points that, and safety will cover more, as I mentioned, the MECC side, but what is really, really key to um, our NBCC expansion, as, as they call it, and, and many of you are already familiar with this NBCC expansion because it, it helps to, um, you all help to implement this NBCC, the NBCC being available to any woman diagnosed by any provider. Um, because prior to September 1, 2007, a woman had to have been diagnosed with breast or cervical cancer by a BCCS provider, and now that is not the case anymore. Um, the next few slides are going to go over the performance measures that the CDC has set forth for BCCS. The, I'll start with the cervical cancer side. The, this slide is regarding the, the time frame and um, what our goals of all our BCCS providers are. 75% um, of women who have received an abnormal pap test, this is also in BCCS, um, if they receive an abnormal pap test, they should have the results within 90 days. Also, at least 80% of women with, um, with moderately or severe Abnormal PAPs should initiate also within 80, or excuse me, women, 80% uh, of women with invasive cervical cancer should initiate part of our performance measures from the CDC. And as well, at least 20% of the, and these are current screening, um, we are currently in our fiscal year uh, 2012. Well, which is wrapping up on June 30th is the last day of this fiscal year. So, um, on number four, on number four, uh, of course, we you know there are some new cancer, cancer screening guidelines, um, which have come forth, and the new screening guidelines will start as of July 1. Um, so, our policy manual, which are uh, updated policy manual which will be posted, um, the finalized version, the draft version is online, but the final version with more information about the current, or the, excuse me, the cervical cancer screening guidelines that will take effect July 1 will be in that final version of our BCCS policy manual which is also on our bccstexas.com website. So um, that will sort of affect this number four about um, the administered to women never or rarely screened. Um, the number five is that at least 90% of clients with abnormal pap tests, they indeed have complete follow-up, and we have wonderful case managers um, and clinicians and patient navigators that help women to be sure that they follow through with their follow-up services that they need. As well, at least 90% of women with moderately or severely abnormal pap or that invasive cervical cancer, they start treatment as well. So those are the goals on the cervical side. Now for the breast cancer side of, of screening and follow-up care, at least 75% of women with abnormal breast screenings will receive results within 60 days. And then also at least 80% of women diagnosed with breast cancer should initiate treatment with, within 60 days. on exposure. To reduce your risk, avoid exposure to the sun. Thank you. Be sure to place your phones on mute um, because when you push the hold button, we can hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, our next slide here. Also, as you know, BGCS provides screen mammograms to women um, who are 40 and over. But they do have a target range, the CDC, uh, age range, excuse me, CDC states that at least 75% of the mammograms that are provided through BCCS and paid for by the CDC are uh, to women who are over 40. So 
So, and that is a, an average pool for the whole state, all the BCCS providers. So, um, so that means that the target from the state is that 25% of screening mammograms paid by the CDC are for women who are between the ages of 40 and 49. Now, we also have supplemental grants, um, which is through the Breast Cancer Prevention Fund, and they have provided us money, I think it's going on two or three years now, this grant award that we received. They provide money specifically, some supplemental funding for our providers to provide, or excuse me, to pay for screening mammograms for women who are 40 to 49. Now, just recently, we received additional funding from them from the Breast Cancer Prevention Fund to help pay for diagnostic mammograms. And that's for women who are 40 to 64. So, um, so that is that is a, a great opportunity for our, our uh, women in, in the community to uh, gain more access to care with this additional funding. And then, uh, lastly, um, the abnormal breast screening. So, who have had an abnormal breast screening, that they be sure to complete their follow up. Uh, at least ninety percent of those women have complete follow up. In women with a breast cancer diagnosis have uh, started treatment, and at least 90% of our BCCS clients have started treatment. The next one is um, those of you who are interested in, in more of the policy side of things as well. The, um, there are two changes to BCCS policy somewhat recently. Um, um, the first one in blue is from 2010, and then the next one in pink is from this this year. And also, I left off the one that I mentioned, how our policy is going to change um, after July 1. So uh, I left that off just yet once everything is finalized. So back in 2010, or, or previous to November 2010, young women at the age of 18 could be screened for BCCS. And um, that has changed to 21. So in order to have a screening, uh, cervical cancer screening, you have to be at least 21. And then the other one is in reference to women with abnormal, um, abnormal cervical, excuse me, abnormal clinical breast exams or abnormal uh, mammograms. They need to have two diagnostics, not just one. So I just want to let you know about that. We have um, this picture right here is actually right from our website, and the online clinic locator has a, this specific state of Texas map, and all the little red dots are all the BCCS clinics in Texas. So currently, um, we have 44 contractors, but out of those 44 contractors, there's over 200 clinics throughout the state of Texas, and this is a list of the different types of providers that we contract with. To provide BCCS services, and wanted to mention how do you find those clinics? You go to our bccstexas.com, and the two one one or eight seven seven phone numbers are a resource as well to get referrals. So women can be provided that two one one number or that eight seven seven number. Um, both go to the same place. Um, but indeed, to speak with someone, you can call that number or go to our website for that online clinic locator. Now we're going to get into more of the program funding, the eligibility, and what kind of services we provide. So this, this diagram here is a list of, not a list, but a visual of the Funding sources that we have, as I mentioned, we receive funding from CDC as well, that breast cancer prevention fund. Then two other sources that I haven't talked about yet is our Title Five, um, that maternal child health block grant that helps cover cervical dysplasia treatment and surveillance for women with biopsy confirmed diagnosis of cervical dysplasia, and we also receive state funding, which is that general revenue. Also this fiscal year, we received additional TANF funds. So some of our contractors received TANF money, and um, that also helps to cover the screening and diagnostic services. And, and indeed, that is the Texas um, TANF is the Texas Assistance for Needy Family um, funding. So that is uh, a great.
great addition to help expand our services as well. The eligibility into BTCS, who can qualify for this program? Well, you have to be at or below 200% of poverty, and we have a, a chart on our website as well as here on our next slide is that chart to kind of give you a visual of what does 200% of poverty mean. Um, they need to be uninsured or underinsured. They, their insurance has too high of a copay uh, or deductible, and um, or they, or their insurance doesn't cover screening. So, the yes, might be available to them if they meet those income guidelines. And you only have to be a Texas resident. So, for screening, diagnostics, cervical displays of treatment. Um, you only need to be a Texas resident. Immigration status is not a factor. So, specific to, and I already kind of mentioned some of this, um, on the breast side for eligibility of screening and diagnostics, you need to be 40 or older, and then also women who appear um, with symptoms, uh, BCCS provider, um, if they're under 40, so if they're 39 and under and they're symptomatic, they may be eligible for diagnostic services. Now on the cervical side, as I mentioned, um, the screening starts at age 21, and however, if they are symptomatic and they're at least 18, they can receive diagnostic services. Now here's that visual, and again, this is on our, our website under the eligibility so that's a visual of the income guidelines, and that is current for 2012. The programs, excuse me, our program services that we provide, um, screening, and that includes clinical breast exams, mammography, pap smears, pelvic, uh, the diagnostics includes the biopsies, colposcopies, uh, and our website has an available services link on it, which goes into a little bit more detail. Um, I've mentioned the cervical displays of treatment services and indeed the case management for women who have abnormal pap screening or abnormal uh, breast screening. Indeed, there's case managers and patient navigators that help these women navigate through the system to help make sure that they follow through with their follow-up care. And that last little button is about the MBCC because indeed BCCS clinics are the only place a woman can go to apply for this special Medicaid program, and Stacey will give you more information on that. Um, but that is one of the services. This is sort of a snapshot, an overview of what we do at the state office and our general responsibilities, as well as one of the general responsibilities of the BCCS um, contracted providers. So um, the you can look at that for uh, more information. I want to be sure we get uh, Stacy enough time as well. Uh, you can review that later. So, and I've already sort of gone into that information. We're going to skip along to, um, oops, sorry. This will go a little bit more quickly. I'm going to skip to the cervical dysplasia, and then we'll turn it over to Stacy. But the cervical dysplasia, what this means is a woman is a biopsy confirmed cervical dysplasia and she can receive treatment and uh, management surveillance throughout her cervical dysplasia and until it's secured. These are some of the services that they can that they can receive for cervical dysplasia. And um, the key thing to this is that um, indeed a woman has to meet the same basic BCCS eligibility requirements. Um, cervical dysplasia would be that biopsy confirmed in one, two, or three, or a carcinoma in situ. But what's key to this, a uh, woman might not qualify for MBCC, and it might be due to her immigration status. So as I mentioned, cervical dysplasia funds um, do not require immigration status as an eligibility requirement, just that they are a Texas resident and meet the um, income guidelines, um, they're uninsured or underinsured. <laughs> so the last part of my section, I just wanted to let you know, this is sort of a snapshot. This comes from our BCCS fact sheet, which is online as well. And this shows the 
growth in the numbers since 2006. Now, uh, as I mentioned, our fiscal year is just wrapping up at the end of this month. So, um, fiscal year 2012 numbers won't be out until about September, October. Um, our contractors still have time to do their data entry after the contract, uh, or excuse me, after the fiscal year ends. So, that data, the final data, won't be out until September, October. Uh, when we report that to the CDC, but you can see here the growth over the years of the number of women that BCCS has been able to serve and, um, and the hard work that our, our contractors and um, all their staff do. Um, also, I wanted to reference the outreach section of our website. Uh, it, there is a link when you go to bccstexas.com or you can click on that little um, that last link at the bottom is go to the outreach section and there's a lot of client referral sheets, the fact sheets, uh, tracker brochures on both BCCS and NBCC. So just want to let you know there's a resource there um, for downloadable materials for, for marketing and partnerships and things like that. So that is, that wraps up my part of the presentation. Let's go ahead and go back to the NBCC. Okay. Thank you, Stacy. Hi, right, thank you, Gina. Um, I'm Stacy Johnston with HHSC, and I'll be talking briefly about the Medicaid for Breast and Cervical Cancer Program, um, NBCC. Um, first, we'll um, cover um, this program provides coverage for women who um, meet the requirements who have the um, certain breast cancer um, and cervical cancer and certain pre cancer conditions. So, Gina talks about um, the expansion. This happened in September 2007, so hopefully, most of you are aware um, that. Um, beginning with this expansion, clients that women can receive a diagnosis from any provider in Texas, um, and they um, but they have to go to a BCCS clinic to apply for the program. The um, clinic um, contractors they will have to submit that application um, to DSHS. So that is the change that they can receive the diagnosis at any provider. Um, as I said, they have to apply at the BCCS clinic. This, uh, Gina mentioned the clinic locator on the DSHS website. So uh, any client or interested person can just go to that website and find clinics located around Texas. Um, I wanted to note that NBCC provides um, comprehensive coverage for women. So um, a woman on NBCC qualifies for every can receive coverage for every service that is covered under traditional Medicaid. So that could be anything that's not even related to cancer treatment, like um, going to a regular doctor or a dentist, um, hospital or a clinic, emergency care, what um, type of therapy, speech therapy, or if she needs glasses, um, et cetera. Um, Okay. To be eligible for the program, a woman, um, she has to have a qualifying diagnosis of breast and cervical cancer um, or a pre-cancer condition. These, all of these conditions are listed on the DSHS website, so you could go to that side and look at the qualifying diagnosis page and see, make sure that that diagnosis is covered in, under this program. Um, she must have a family gross income of at or below 200% of SPL, so federal poverty. Um, she has to be uninsured um, and not be able to get any type of other Medicaid, be age 18 to 64, um, has to live in Texas, and be a U.S. citizen or a legal immigrant. Um, sorry. Okay, so um, I will talk about presumptive eligibility. This began last year. Um, a woman um, 
Presumptive eligibility allows a woman um, to receive NBCC coverage right away before the um, final determination of eligibility has been made by HHSC. So if she goes to a clinic, she has received a diagnosis, the BCCS clinic can apply and on the form, the BCC form, the clinic can indicate that she is eligible for presumptive. And we are um, advising every BCCS clinic to go ahead and indicate on every application that the woman is presumptive. Um, she does have to meet these qualifications on this page that she has applied under BCCS and needs treatment. So she's under age 65 and does not have other insurance. So if she meets these basic uh, requirements, the, um, only these three, then the BCCS clinic can go ahead and uh, mark that on the application. So um, the next step in that process is that um, once the HHSC receives the application, the advisor will determine if she is eligible for NBCC, the regular NBCC program, um, or if she's been eligible, um, or if she qualifies for another kind of Medicaid. So if she's found ineligible for NBCC, that uh, she will be denied prospectively, which means that she every um, service that she received while she was um, eligible under presumptive will be covered by Medicaid. Um, prospectively denied means any service she receives after that determination will not be covered. Um, it could be that she qualifies for another Medicaid program, so it would be covered under that program, or if she doesn't qualify at all, she, the service will not be covered at all. If she is found eligible for NBCC at that point, um, the following month, she will be determined NBCC um, eligible and will be on the program. And then HHSC will review the, um, the woman's uh, coverage six months after that. So a woman on presumptive eligibility receives full Medicaid coverage, just like if she was on regular NBCC. Um, and then I talked about if she um, is later found ineligible for NBCC, all of those services she received under while she was found presumptive will be covered. And presumptive eligibility begins on the day that the BCCS clinic indicates that she, on the application, that she is presumptive, and that cannot be, that has to be at least the day after her diagnosis. This is um, a sh screenshot of the um, qualifying diagnosis guide you can find um, at that website listed there. Um, she will have to meet one of those diagnoses. Um, and they, uh, this is just, uh, I'll just briefly talk about the application processing for NBCC. Um, it, uh, it begins with the BCCS clinic. That clinic passes it over, and the back number should be on the application, and I believe, to DSHS. Then DSHS uh, nurses review the application, make sure that everything's correct. If it's not, they'll return it. Um, but if it is correct, it is forwarded back to Maximus. Maximus um, reviews the application for um, completeness and other reasons, and then they forward it on and, and scan it um, into the system, and that is sent to HHSC. Um, there's a specialized unit in HHSC that deals just specifically with MECC. Um, this department then um, processes the application and um, either denies or accepts. Yeah. And then some additional information about NBCC. Um, HHSC reviews the um, woman's case every six months. And the only, she has to meet the um, criteria except um, that she does Income does not count um, when HHSC is looking at renewal. So as long as she is meeting all of the um, NBCC criteria that 
she does not have other insurance, but um, as long as she's still 64 under she and those other guy, uh, requirements, she will continue to receive NBCC for another six months after that, No, um, in, regardless of her income level, um, just as long as she does not have other insurance. Um, and um, NBCC clients will have to recertify their NBCC paperwork prior to their coverage lasting, and that they will receive a notification in the mail. Um, I wanted to know that we have been working on just um, a, a short fact sheet about NBCC for NBCC clients, um, and we will post it on the DSHS website. Um, it, it provides basic information, a lot of what I talked about, and uh, maybe the collaborative can also post it along with this submit to them, uh, and we will be also publishing some uh, very specific guidance on the presumptive eligibility, and, um, and that is it for our presentation. We thank you, um, and Gina's going to close out. Our last slide has our contact information, and um, at this point, too, we wanted to open up for any questions before we officially close our presentation. Were there any, any typed questions in here, or so feel free to, um, I guess, unmute your phone, and I'll let Carrie take over from here. All right, go ahead, and if anybody has any questions, just go ahead. Or you can raise your little hand on your Adobe Connect if you want to. Mm -hmm. No question. Well, I had a question. Um, just to be clear on how to apply for MBCC, is every BCCS provider, will they have those uh, MBCC, um, that same applications available, or do you have to go to a different place, or does it just depend? Um, basically, what we suggest is always we'll give the phone number to the closest BCCS clinic, and um, the woman should call there first, say she would like to apply for NBCC, and then um, if she's eligible, and when she calls that office, they'll explain whether or not she needs to go to that clinic or maybe go to a different clinic. Um, that has a case manager, a case manager to help process the application. So it, it really it's kind of different at each site. So that's why we always recommend to call first, even when they're just wanting to get screened. Be sure to call, and that way you get more information on what their um, eligibility uh, proof of eligibility items that that clinic needs to um, to screen for eligibility. But, uh, you know, we have in some cases where they can drop off the application at a certain site, but then that application is sent over to the, another clinic that has the case management to review the information. So it just depends. Mm -hmm. it just depends. So it's always good to just call first. Okay, great. And then I see Teresa from Palo Pinto General Hospital and Mineral Wells has a question about Medicaid eligibility and whether it, the start date is after a diagnosis. Or, um, is that correct or has it changed? Um, MBCC begins the day after the diagnosis. That's the earliest it can begin. Okay. And then Ian had a question here. Um, on the fact sheet that um, you're going to be posting soon on your website, um, is it in English and Spanish? Yes, it is. Okay. And, and we will put that on our website also to have it for um, you know our membership also. And, and also, when I was looking at that um, table that you had up that listed the BCCS contractors and the counties that they served, I noticed like in 2010, uh, counties served were like 245, and then 2011, they're only serving like 218 counties. Um, is that just due to some closures or? Well, yeah. I, I can it can be due to, to several different things. Yeah, some of the, um, unfortunately, some of our clinics have closed uh, due to uh, many of them were also family planning providers. Mm -hmm. So uh, due to family planning budget cuts, some of the resources have closed. Um, that's part of it. Um, uh, it might be that the, the Contractors themselves have limited their service area uh, to 
just particular counties? Is there, there are some clinics that, you know, they might just provide services to one county or they might provide to the surrounding counties as well. So it, it really is, is up to the provider, yeah. Are you trying to recruit new sites then at this point? <laughs> The, um, we are not, right now we are in a renewal year, so we're not in a competitive RFP process at this point, but any provider, uh, clinician that's interested in becoming a BCCS contractor could subcontract with one of the current BCCS providers. So that would help, yeah, to expand services. So if there's a, a county that's lacking a BCCS clinic, then yeah, there might be somebody that uh, is interested in becoming part of the program and so they would uh, call the nearest BCCS provider near to them and see if they might be able to subcontract. So, okay. so and, and we're happy to help, you know, make those connections to the contractors. I do want to say thank you to uh, Gina and uh, uh, for passing the, uh, you know, information about our breast health portal. A lot of the uh, contractors that um, you work with are now listed on our breast health portal and uh, you're, you're sending that out to your contractors really helped us increase um, access to services and uh, expanded our sites quite a bit on the portal so we appreciate that and uh, yeah thank you and so were there any other questions uh, Mary I see that you're asking about a printout of the presentation if you look at the top left part of your screen where it says files and there's a name there you can actually uh, click on it and just save to your computer and that's it and I'll also be emailing it out to everybody today um, were there any any last questions before we go thank you again to to Gina and to Stacy and to our uh, program committee for uh, putting this all together um, uh, thank you so much and then we'll also have a uh, I'll put a recording of this as well as some links to the sites that Stacy and Gina discussed and a copy of the presentation on our website here I just posted the link on our education page on our website so you can uh, get on and just download that stuff All right. oh, yes, and, and we, we really appreciate everyone's support of uh, both BCCS and MBCC programs and please feel free to call Call us. Our email and phone number is on there as well. Mm -hmm. And so, any way we can help get the word out to partners, please feel free to call. All right. Thank you so much. And then, just one more reminder: we, our next webinar is going to be July 26th of next month. It's going to be an overview of the Benefit Bank of Texas, which is a really great resource for um, being able to find services for patients. Um, who are underserved. So um, you can register for that for free as well on the education page. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs>